Yura was standing by the kitchen door, his face red with anger, waving the hand that held a spoon. Grey Mouse! He shouted, so forcefully that the spoon almost flew from his hands and set off in search of adventures under the refrigerator. If you dare to spend even a penny of your salary without consulting my mother, you will be out of this apartment like a cork. Do you understand? This scandal was preceded by many factors. His wife, Irina, had started acquiring new things, good cosmetics, and expensive lingerie. Moreover, she began to spend less and less time at home and more and more at work. She left very early and returned very late. Cooking became increasingly rare. As for her salary, it remained a mystery. Almost all expenses were placed on her husband's shoulders. And if before Irina, when going to bed, would snuggle against her husband and hug him, now the distance between them was growing larger. Furthermore, she began to respond to her husband. You could, Iura, go to the gym. Otherwise, I'll have to push you out the door with my foot, she would say, alluding to the fact that Yura lately, having been eating convenience foods, had started to gain weight rapidly. Additionally, Irina, who was always calm, even began to argue with his mother, who always tried to control the children. She had advice and even demands for every occasion. Recently, Ayura had told his mother about his wife's behavior, and she decided to try to bring order to their family. In the following days, she had a serious face-to-face -face conversation with her daughter-in-law. You should, my dear, pay more attention to the family. You need to think about the children and be kinder to your husband, Olga Mikhailovna would say. That's none of your business, Irina would boldly respond. As long as he was a man, I treated him like a man. But when he became a hamster, then the relationships became appropriate. You shouldn't, little girl, talk like that. You still live in Yura's apartment. His mother tried to correct Irina. And if you don't like it, then go back to your dorm. And if you are rude, I won't tolerate it for long. Olga Mikhailovna was simply outraged by her daughter-in-law's behavior. And starting next month, please give me a complete report on your earnings and expenses. I will decide for myself how to spend this money with my son, Olga Mikhailovna declared. Yura told me that you have started living large. Don't forget, he is your husband, and I will put order in your family. After giving such a lesson, the mother-in-law left, not forgetting to relay the conversation to her son. So, Yura, seeing his mother's total support, started this scandal. Meanwhile, Irina was sitting at the kitchen table, listening to her husband's angry shouts, sipping tiredly from her tea. From the outside, she seemed completely calm. But inside, she felt a little fear. She did not want to return to the dormitory from which her current husband had taken her. Her eyes, to distract herself, were focused on a pair of her husband's old and worn slippers, which lay traitorously at the kitchen threshold, as if their owner was ready to flee from his own words. But within her grew the desire to intensify the imposed conflict. Ayura had simply bored her, and she had long wanted to put all the dots on the I in their relationship. You will fly out of the apartment like a cork, he said. Irina raised an eyebrow and smiled slightly. Well, I accept the role of the cork. I can fly away right now. Yura was surprised. Clearly, he did not expect such calmness from Irina. In his imagination, his wife should have at least smashed some dishes or slammed the door. But Irina simply pushed the cup, which still had a little tea left, aside, stood up and headed for the cupboard. Hey, you! Yura shook his head, finally realizing that everything could now spiral out of his control. What are you doing? Where are you going? I haven't finished yet. I don't want to listen to you anymore, Ayura. I'm tired. Irina cut him off, opening the cupboard and pulling out a small suitcase that had always been hidden for such conflicts. You want to kick me out of the apartment? Then please, you shouldn't have tried so hard. I can leave on my own. You didn't have to ruin my nerves. You? Are you serious? Yura was no longer shouting, but had switched to a calm, almost childish tone. He always lost himself when his wife became so self-assured, for usually he tried to be the main dictator in their relationship. At least that's how it seemed to him. Yes, absolutely serious. Irina nodded, throwing some t-shirts and jeans into the suitcase. You know, Ayura, I've had another man for a long time and you have remained the same dear. Only now you have more branched antlers. Didn't you notice the discomfort when you enter the apartment? And you can't handle your mother at all. You danced to her tune. When we met, you seemed like a real man. Yura stood still. Thousands of thoughts began to fly through his head. Another man? When did that happen? And why had she never mentioned it? Maybe, maybe it's just a joke? You, you're joking? He asked, his voice trembling. Oh, Ayura, with you, jokes are bad. When you shout, 
When you scream, even your antlers start to tremble. Irina was already closing the suitcase. But I'm not joking at all. Do you really think I endured all these years of this nonsense with your mother? Just like that? Pretending to be a submissive and naive girl? But she is my mother. Yura widened his eyes. Do you understand that? She only wants the best for us. I understand, Yura, but just one thing. You probably will never become a mature man as long as you cling to her skirt and listen to her silly advice. Tell me honestly, does she still change your diapers? Don't exaggerate, Darina, Yura protested, although his voice was trembling more and more. He already felt offended. Mom just helps us, helps us save, helps with advice on how to divide our money so that in the future we can buy something valuable. Well, yes, of course, Irina smiled, especially when she counts how many teaspoons of sugar I put in my tea. Yura, do you hear what you're saying? Your mother knows how many shampoos I have and even what socks and panties I wear. Not to mention the fact that you bring her the receipts to check if we are not spending too much on electricity. Yura wanted to contest, but the words got stuck in his throat. It was all true. In fact, his mother, Olga Mikhailovna, was a passionate fighter for saving the family budget. And her reports on family expenses, which she had written for herself all her life, were so precise that they could have become a manual for accountants. Irina, but do you understand? He murmured, but Irina interrupted him. No, Yura, I don't understand anymore, and I don't want to understand. I've been tired of this for a long time, and I was just waiting for the moment when I could change my life again. You live with your mother, not with me. You married her, not me. And I, if you haven't noticed, am a person who has my own desires, goals, and needs. Irina calmly closed the suitcase and sat at the kitchen threshold, ready to leave. Yura finally woke up and ran towards her, trying to stop her. Hey, wait! He practically fell to his knees in front of her. Don't go. I'll fix everything. I'll talk to my mother. We'll live differently, I promise. Irina looked at him, shook her head, and sighed. Ayura, you are a good guy, but you still don't understand. The thing is, you have no one to fight but yourself. Start at least with the fact that you will take care of yourself, shave every day, keep fit, drink less beer. You shouldn't argue with me, but with the way you live. I want to be a happy woman not a prisoner of your childish fears. And I don't want to look thirty when I'm forty and walk around the apartment in your old slippers and dirty t-shirt. But I love you, Yura shouted, grabbing her hand. Love? Irina asked, gently freeing her hand. To love does not mean to keep a person in a cage and restrict their needs. It doesn't mean to demand a report for every step. And you? You have gotten used to me always being next to you. But that is not love, Yura fell silent. For the first time in a long time, he felt that he had lost something, and this time, it was truly important. Irina sighed and, seeing his total despair, decided to soften her tone. You know, Yura, I wish you would learn to be yourself. Not your mother, not someone else, but yourself. Then maybe you will have a chance. But unfortunately not with me anymore. And now goodbye. She turned and left the apartment, leaving Ayura standing on the floor in solitude, among the scattered spoons in the kitchen, and his doubts. Several minutes passed before Yura finally came to his senses. He went to the phone and, in some sort of trance, dialed his mother's number. Mom, he said quietly when he heard her voice. We need to talk. And this was the first time Yura dared to speak to his mother, not as an obedient son, but as a mature man.